welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy. One of the authors who inspired me to start this channel with the premise that there is much fantasy that is wonderful and worthy of critical exploration is Susanna Clark. I'm a big fan of her Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Unfortunately, I read that book many years before I started the channel, and I'm going to need to reread it before I review it. In the meantime, however, Susanna Clark came out with another book last year in 2020 that is a, uh, a much shorter book, and it is very different in nature from Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, and that is Piranesi. This is a book that I just finished reading, and I want to share my thoughts about it. And like Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, Piranesi impressed me deeply. And there are many reasons why I'm going to elaborate on them, but it's interesting to contrast it for a moment with Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Both are wonderful books, but they are different. Uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell is lavish and sprawling, whereas Piranesi is actually rather stark and personal. And it even consists of journal entries made by the title character. Uh, where uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell is reminiscent of Jane Austen. Uh, Piranesi is a much more modern book. But both are very quirky and feature some fantastic prose. And both penetrate deeply into the human experience. For most of the book... Uh, Piranesi, that is, there are only two characters, Piranesi and the other. And I'm not going to say too much about the characters because I'm going to keep this spoiler free, uh, but I will say that it did take me some time to find my footing here. Uh, eventually, I did find myself lured into the beauty of the story, the gentleness and reverence of Piranesi, and the building mystery that is at the heart of of the book. So while it did take me a little while to feel like I was invested, once I was there, I found myself absolutely en entranced by this book by the end. Uh, now it's worth remarking that Piranesi is, uh, was rather an 18th century Italian architect, artist, uh, draftsman. Um, he is probably best known today for his illustrations, engravings, of prisons and very uh, crowded, interesting, um, Escher-like depictions of Rome. In fact, I think Escher was probably inspired by Piranesi. It is definitely worth looking up this artist and the, some, some of his images. It, it, it will give you a bit of the vibe that I think Susanna Clark was going for in the book in some respects. And it also is a clue to some of the themes that you will encounter in the book. So I would definitely recommend looking up some of the uh, images, engravings created by Peter Nasi, the artist in the 18th century. But uh, like the, the pictures, the, the book is very hypnotic and it is dreamlike. It actually reminded me in this respect of Neil Gaiman's um, The Ocean at the End of the Lane. But whereas, uh, well, both feature oceans, which is interesting, um, but whereas Gaiman's is, is a more haunting story, I found Piranesi to be very lyrical, almost meditative at times. Uh, another possible influence here is, I would say, C.S. Lewis. Uh, it's, I think it's fairly evident that C.S. Lewis is an influence. Uh, his Narnia tales, of course. Um, not just because of the idea of entering another world, a magical world by magical means, but also because of the statues that you'll encounter in the magical world. And anyone who's read uh, the Narnia tales will probably know what I mean about statues. Um, but the statues in Piranesi are all about life and art and beauty and the experience of, of humanity. Um, so I think that's a really uh, very interesting touch in there. And I also deeply admire the prose uh, uh, of Piranesi. As I said before, it is very different from the prose of uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, but it is it, nonetheless, both are beautiful in their own way. Um, <clears throat> and she does a brilliant job through this prose of conjuring this whimsical, magical world. And it consists of the house and its vast halls, and the statues that I mentioned before, and the ocean contained within it. 
And there's also the birds that Piranesi communes with. Uh, there's also an interesting feature of the prose, which is that there are, there's a lot of random, especially in the beginning, random capitalization, which reminded me in some ways of the poems of Emily Dickinson, where th things are randomly capitalized. And it, it, it imparts a sense of reverence and, and beauty uh, and importance. And, and has a, the prose has a slightly archaic feel to it as well. And this is a great way of emphasizing Piranesi's isolation. And uh, I won't say more than that, but uh, in terms of themes, this is absolutely jam-packed with some really great, thoughtful stuff. One of the reasons why I love this book and I found it such a meditative experience is the, the number of themes that Susanna Clark has skillfully woven into this very spare narrative. It, you could read this in a day if you were determined, really. But among the themes, there is memory and how memory is tied to identity and how trauma and illness can affect one's identity. Are you the same person after a severe illness uh, or after a traumatic, traumatic event? Are you the same person 10 years later? Uh, so there's a lot of interesting questions there. There's also solitude versus community and the nature of humanity itself, because we are creatures that live in community and need community, but also need solitude. And the balancing of those two things is something that is uh, very important. There are various representations of what we're capable of as human beings in the, in the form of Piranesi and also the other. I won't say more than that, but there is also a great deal of ambiguity, which I really enjoyed in this book. Uh, you know, is, is the, the entire, it's a bit Inception-like in a way, uh, is the entire story real? Or is it the narrator's imagination? Is Piranesi um, out of touch with reality? Or is uh, he stripped of social standards? And as a consequence, is he one of the most clear-sighted, sanest individuals you could meet? <laughs> These are questions I found myself asking not only throughout the narrative, but at the end as well. But I highly, highly recommend reading this book. It was a very enjoyable read. And I can't say enough about Susanna Clarke's beautiful prose. Uh, it was a very moving experience. And I still find myself feeling like I've just emerged from a dream having finished the book yesterday. Uh, really appreciate this read very much. And I, I hope that if you try it out, that you will enjoy it as well. And I'll be back very soon with some more reviews and some interesting, I hope, collaborative discussions uh, on the channel. There's lots of exciting stuff ahead, so I hope you will join me. Until next time.